night on Crossfire. Did talking all night help the Republicans? I do so like green eggs and ham. Will the new price tags for Obamacare help the president? They can get high quality, affordable health care for less than their cell phone bill. On the left, Stephanie Cutter. On the right, S.E. Cup. And in the crossfire, Democratic Senator Robert Casey, who supports the health care law, and Republican Senator Saxby Chambliss, who wants it repealed. Obamacare, worth fighting for or fighting against. Tonight on Crossfire. Welcome to Crossfire. I'm Stephanie Cutter on the left. I'm S.E. Cup on the right. Needless to say, it's been an entertaining 24 hours here in Washington. <laughs> I will credit my father. He invented, this wasn't for the restaurant, but he did it anyway. He invented green eggs and ham. Now, number one, just as a consumer, I'm a big fan of eating White Castle burgers. I want to take the opportunity to read two bedtime stories to my girls. I do so like green eggs and ham. Can you tell me, Senator Cruz, where do Chinese gooseberries come from? Chinese gooseberries actually come from New Zealand. How are you doing? I thank the senator from Kansas, and I will tell you I am doing fabulous. As Benjamin Franklin Riley noted, indeed, we must all hang together. Otherwise, we shall most assuredly hang separately. I will confess that I hope we can avoid the hanging part of the, uh, <laughs> of the uh, situation that you've outlined. But I don't want to miss the opportunity within the limited time to do something that is, is imperative uh, that, that, that I do, which is to thank the men and women who have endured this, this baton death march. Well, look, um, say what you want about the wisdom of the strategy and the artfulness of the execution. Uh huh. Someone had to do this. Someone had to stand up and support the millions of Americans who want Obamacare opposed. He was elected to do exactly that. And the fact that three years after this is already the law of the land, you still have President Obama and President Clinton and Hillary Clinton trying to sell this law, I think is proof that we need more discussion on it. Well, I think I want to focus on the baton death march piece of his remarks, not the gooseberries or the green eggs and ham, but the d b b baton White Castle hamburgers. Uh, White Castle hamburgers. And we, we didn't even get to Star Wars. Um, but. What exactly was the purpose of that? Because remember, the goal here was to block a bill that he's actually for that would shut down the government unless the president agreed to defund Obamacare. So number one, he was for the bill, he was trying to filibuster. Number two, he was trying to shut down the federal government over the funding of Obamacare. How is that a good strategy for the Republican Party? We've ar that's already been proven wrong when Republicans shut down the government more than a decade ago. So I, I think that he aptly summed it up when he called it the Baton Death March. We will see. <laughs> In the crossfire tonight, two of Ted Cruz's own colleagues, Democrat Bob Casey of Pennsylvania, who supports the health care law, and Republican Saxby Chambliss of Georgia, who wants to repeal it. Senator Chambliss, the first question goes to you. Sure. So Senator Cruz has been taking quite a lot of heat from his own party and your Republican caucus in the Senate. Um, Senator McCain said this has been debated. The American people have spoken in the last election in 2012 and when they reelected President Obama. Senator McConnell, your Republican leader, said our strategies have to be based in the real world, in reality, not based on what Ted Cruz just did. You've also been a critic of what Senator Cruz uh, did last night. So. Is this good for the Republican Party? Where's the strategy? Well, look, um, you know, Bob and I are privileged to serve in a very unusual institution. You've been there with yes. us. You know how it works. And uh, the thing about the United States Senate is that every member of the Senate has the opportunity to express themselves when they feel passionately about some idea. Ted Cruz feels really passionate about repealing Obamacare. Now, I disagree maybe with the method. But look, uh, he is a member of the Senate just like each of us are, and he has the right to take the floor, uh, as he did last night, and to uh, express himself and, and deliver a message, Stephanie, to the American people that he thinks is very important, and frankly, I think is very important, and that is we're fixing to get hit with the biggest entitlement program the American taxpayer has ever seen, 
2.6 trillion over the next 10 years, and we don't have a way to pay for it. We're broke now. We're going to be fighting over the debt ceiling in two weeks. And Ted's point has been, look, this thing is going to decrease the quality of health care. People are not going to get what they think they're going to get. Plus, we don't have the money to pay for this. Mm -hmm. So I, I respect his right to well, do the, that. Well, the health care yeah. law, with all due respect, is fully paid for. And we, we can talk about the specifics of that. But you mentioned that Ted Cruz feels passionately uh, about the health care law and defunding the health care law. But where was the par passion in the Republican Party last night? I mean, he had a handful of people with him, but it was just a handful. It was more than a handful. It, it was, was Rand Paul, Mike Lee, Jeff Sessions, Mike Enzi, Jim Inhofe, Marco Rubio. A lot of people came to the floor. That's about it. He was not a man on an <laughs> island alone, he, he although was there was some pushback. isolated, and people were pretty critical of him. And it, not just Democrats, but largely Republicans. So I just, I don't see where the passion was with Republicans beyond, behind this tactic? Oh, well, rest assured, um, you know, as McCain said this morning, uh, we were there Christmas Eve 2009. We fought and fought and fought as hard as we could fight for mm -hmm. weeks and weeks and months to not see this bill come to law. It passed with 51 votes. Um, that's We've been not passionate a for huge three majority. years. But yeah, I mean, Senator McCain also said that We've, Supreme Court. Let me get Senator Casey. We voted here. against, uh, voted to repeal it time and time again. Let Senator me, Casey, let me let me ask you. Obviously, no one's going to argue Ted Cruz did not accomplish the mission last night. His own stated mission of defunding Obamacare. But most Americans aren't happy entirely with this piece of legislation. Should we ignore all of them and end debate just because Obama says so? No, what we should do, as he is do what we've been doing since the bill was passed, debate the merits of it, work on changes to it. But we should also remember that a lot of the, the parts of this law that have been implemented are working. 17 million kids with pre-existing conditions had no coverage before this law passed. Millions of seniors getting help with the coverage gap, the so-called donut hole, which is a nice way of saying you got a big hole in your budget to pay for prescription drugs. Millions of them being helped. So a lot of families being helped, a lot of small businesses being helped. So we got to deal with the issue. But if we're just going to play games here and have, have a, an ideological high wire act uh, about any issue, instead of debating the issue, making changes. I've, I've supported changes in the bill. I've supported changes that would include uh, uh, repealing the medical device uh, fee. Yeah, but, but so, Senator, entire, so there are ways to do that. Entire, and there are times, there are time, the right time to do that is in the, the normal course of business. So not, after we pass it and, and, realize, shut, and, and then realize how terrible it is. Not threatening a shutdown And spend a whole lot of money on it. Because you have an ideological point of view. No, but uh, Senator, tell me, tell me honestly and please tell your colleague, are Americans going to benefit long into the future uh, uh, because of Obamacare when premiums, as we're seeing, are actually going to go up for entire classes of people who will not be able to afford this this uh, I, I know this what program. he's doing, for example, to my staff. Uh, I see these young folks who are not making a lot of money, and I see what's fixing to happen to their premiums. Uh, some of them are going from $200 a month to as much as $800 a month, and we're really right. not even sure of what those final numbers are going to be, but that's the estimate that they've been given. No, you're right. In fact, Forbes today the said the coverage. data released has been highly selective. Well, we don't uh, know. And, and well, Forbes said, but you know where you can companies. find the data? Healthcare.gov. That's the data. People, American well, people can whoa, go whoa, to that whoa, website, whoa, put whoa, in their Stephanie, numbers, problem, find out yeah, what they're eligible for. It's .gov. That means it's coming out of the White House. Well, okay, now, how about... If we trust those figures, you want to negotiate with the Russians. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> we... Okay. It's Health and Human Services. Today they had a report that said premiums will be 16% lower nationwide than, than was anticipated. So, by whom? And, and that's before subsidies. Then was anticipated by before whom? Before subsidies. Absolutely. Before any tax credits okay. or subsidies. I want to, I want to point for, out... No, you brought up subsidies. Who pays for subsidies? I want to bring up something that's tax slightly payers. ironic. Taxpayers. This isn't monopoly money. In the Houston Chronicle... You tout subsidies like today. this is the fix. <laughs> Who pays for it? Me. Senator Chambliss, I want you to look at this. Today in the Houston Chronicle, right next to a big headline about Ted Cruz wasting everybody's time trying to shut down the government there was an article about the in the Houston Chronicle about the new options available to the people of Texas and how the prices were coming down and according to the Houston Chronicle in a, a fam family of four making fifty thousand dollars which means they will be eligible for tax credits uh, will pay about fifty seven dollars 
for their health care every month. Right after now, subsidies. after subsidies. Right now, they pay upwards of eighteen hundred to two thousand dollars. So, how is that not a better system than we currently have? Well, let's go back to SE's point. Who's going to pay those subsidies, and where's that money going to come from? It's going to come out. So, are you against out, giving people tax credits? It's going to come out of the pockets of those same people That's you right. just said are paying fifty-seven pay dollars a month. And um, what kind of health care policy is a family of four going to get for fifty-seven dollars <laughs> a pretty a good month? one compared to what they're getting now. They're if, getting if a health care policy that can't deny them. Really screwed. Can't out. deny them health care because they have a pre-existing condition. And that's great. I, All I preventive care that. is covered for. Uh, pregnancy for women is covered for. A number of different benefits. They can't put an annual cap on you. Right now, the health care system, you, regardless of what you're paying, you have no idea if that insurance policy is going to be there when you need it. Now, because of the new law that's going into effect, it's guaranteed to be there. And you know so, exactly what you're getting. So let's, let's take that example, though. You're talking about uh, less than $700 a year for that family of four. Anybody in America knows that when you go in to see a doc and you have one test done, <laughs> you've already exceeded that $700. So who's going to pay that? Well, and let me pay ask over you, and let me ask that. Senator Casey about who's going to pay, because I pay. think that young people are being unfairly burdened here. Let me ask you about Philadelphia and your home state. According to the latest numbers, premiums are not going down. A single 27-year-old on the bronze plan, who wasn't likely willing to pay $73 before Obamacare, will now be mandated to pay $195. Why are young people being unfairly targeted to pay for older folks? Here's, here's what, what's going to happen with the young people. If, if they sign up uh, in big numbers, which is one of the efforts undertaken by the administration, this is going to work. The, the math on this yep. will work because we need to have young it's people. A big F. Young people, I think they will sign up because, look, they need health care. And I think they also care about... But they're going to pay sure. more than they were paying oh, before. Look, subsidy. We can, Those numbers we can are go through. We can go through. You're right, but the subsidy is not going to close the gap. But, but here's we'll the problem, Messi. I, I hear the message about repeal, 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 repeal. That's all there is, right? One well, consequence... Repeal and replace. Well, it's, the, the problem, Saxby, you might want to replace it, but the, 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 the Republican Party in Congress, maybe not Saxby, but I have not heard... I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Do you know John McCain? He came up with the health care plan. I agree with what Newt Gingrich said in August. He said the Republicans don't have a plan. <laughs> and, and if you repeal it, <laughs> one thing we know about repeal, if you repeal it, CBO says you got a hole of $109 billion. Okay, so there's already a big hole. But I'd like to hear, and I would give back some time here, but I'd like to hear the Republican plan to make sure that, that small businesses have some help with their health care, to make sure that families can afford health care, to make sure that every child with a pre-existing condition will never, ever be threatened by no coverage or no treatment. That can't be guaranteed under the, st under the old status quo. We're going to go back to those years where insurance companies are in total charge of, of not just your, your, your uh, premium or your care, but in some cases your life. Well, during the debate on Obamacare, Bob, there were a number of Republican plans that were put out there. The one that I am a co-sponsor of and supported the most was the one that Tom Coburn and Richard Burr put out there. Uh, there was a very good plan, and it costs nowhere near the money that, that uh, Obamacare is going to cost. And also didn't have all these hidden taxes in it. I say hidden. Some yeah. of them are pretty overt. But there's also a lot of hidden taxes in there that you and I know about and that we agree ought to be repealed. You mentioned the medical device tax. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that um, on uh, home sales, there's going to ultimately be a tax on there uh, to pay for Obamacare. Part of the student loan money was to pay for part of health care. So there's just an awful lot of uh, hidden taxes out there that people are all of a sudden going to realize they're going to have to pay to fund this monster bill. Okay. Oh, why, why should well, we have an exercise where people are ready, literally ready to shut the government down or default on our full faith and credit of the United States? To, to relitigate an issue that we should be debating outside yeah. of the, and we're going to talk outside about of the that crisis. More. Um, so Ted Cruz just wasted the last day, which means Republicans are getting closer to a huge problem. Senator Chambliss, I want to know what you're going to do about it. So that's next. Crossfire, brought to you by Cisco. Tomorrow starts here.
Today, my ambulance knew all about a bike accident just by talking to a helmet. It grabbed the patient's record before we even picked him up. It found out the doctor we needed was at St. Anne's. And it got his okay on treatment from miles away. It even pulled strings with the stoplights. My ambulance talks with smoke alarms and pilots and stadiums. But, of course, it's a good listener, too. Today, Cisco is connecting the Internet of Everything, so everything works like never before. Writing is my passion. It's important to have something that you are passionate about. I tell my patients that all the time. I am a dermatologist. I also have melanoma. I looked everywhere for the most advanced treatment. I found it at Vanderbilt. That's what saved my life. Do you really want to change the world? He can do whatever the hell he wants. If you want to do this, we have to do it now. He may have leaked the whole database. Oh, my God. 12 million people have seen that video. Still want to tell me you think it's just a little website? There are lives at risk. This is information the world needs to know. He's not a journalist. He's a threat to national security. They're coming after us. We need to be careful who we trust. Let's take the fight to them. have to go. The Fifth Estate. Rated R. In theaters October 18th. Dad, Dad, Katy Perry is coming to town. Can we get tickets, please? Tickets? Sure. How many? Well, there's Hannah and Maddie and Jen and Sarah and Sophie. Whoa, hold on. Here it comes. We can't forget about your older sister. <gasps> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Seriously? What? I get two times the thank you points on each ticket. <sighs> Can I come? Yeah. The City Thank You Preferred card. Now earn two times the points on entertainment and dining out with no annual fee. To apply, go to city.com slash thank you cards. Piers interviews former President Bill Clinton, and nothing is off the table. Even Ted Cruz and his war on Obamacare. Most of his party think he's crackers. Please. Once in a while, I'm extremely grateful for your British roots. <laughs> Tonight at 9 on CNN. The fastest selling cane on national television is the cane that stands alone the hurricane. I love it. When I go shopping, I can let it balance while I get stuff off the shelf. When I reach down, my cane is right there where I left it. The hurricane is the all-terrain cane. Sand, gravel, snow, the hurricane keeps you on the go. It gives me more stability. The hurricane goes everywhere you go, and when you need it, it's out in seconds. And the proprietary pivot base gives you more stability at any angle. A lot of people stop and ask, oh my gosh, where do you get a cane like that? Right now on national TV, we're offering our best deal ever. Get the full Hurricane standalone package for an historic price. Now with free shipping. Just go to www.hurricane.com and enter the promo code to unlock our best value. www.hurricane.com. I'm Christiana Manpour, and this is CNN. Welcome back. Senator Ted Cruz just held the Senate hostage for 21 straight hours. He was trying to kill Obamacare, of course, but he also was trying to persuade his fellow Republicans to do things his way. Listen to what he said last Sunday on Fox News. Any vote for cloture, any vote to allow Harry Reid to add funding for Obamacare with a just a 51 vote threshold, a vote for cloture is a vote for Obamacare. But after talking all night, he didn't follow his own advice. He joined the other 99 senators in voting yes for cloture, including our two guests, Democratic Senator Bob Casey and Republican Senator Saxby Chambliss. So Senator Chambliss, did Senator Cruz vote for Obamacare according to the own, the, his own test that he set up? <laughs> well, you're going to have to ask him about that. Um, <laughs> I think my test would be a little bit different. Look, this. Um, uh, Bob and I know how we've been operating in the Senate. And we've had <clears throat> difficulty from time to time getting cloture votes on um, moving to bills, much less uh, closing off debate. But today, this is too important um, a time in our uh, the fiscal situation of our country 
we need to get on this bill, and I would simply like to think that Ted understands that, mm -hmm. and that that's, uh, that's why he agreed that we need to go to the bill, and now we get into the real debate uh -huh. on it. So the next... So do you think that Senator Cruz, though, with all of the theatrics that we went through over the past several days and the attention that he's gotten, is he the future of your party? Uh, well, you know, everybody um, uh, that comes to the Senate uh, comes with the idea of running for president. Have you true. always heard that? Bob and I are the That's two true. exceptions. Except you two. <laughs> um, well, or maybe and, there's an announcement and, you want to make. And let's don't kid ourselves. I mean, there are aspirations out there on the part of a number of members of the United States Senate on both sides of the aisle. And after all, uh, this current president's term is up in 2016, so uh, it's no secret about what's going on. There. Well, Senator Casey, let me let me ask you about uh, President Obama, who agrees that this law needs some tweaking. He's delayed parts of it. He's exempt entire classes of people from the full brunt of of uh, it, its weight for now. What's one thing that you, as a Democrat, would offer to Republicans to try to make this law more workable, more attractive, more sellable? Well, I think, first of all, we should do it outside the context of shutting the government down or defaulting on our... Okay, idea. fair. So in a, in a real debate okay. uh, on policy. But look, we mentioned the medical device fee. Uh, that, that position that I took to, to support repeal of it came about because I had businesses in Pennsylvania we spent a lot of time with learning about the impact of that, and we decided to, to change a position. I think that that's going to happen numerous times, just like it's happened to every piece of major I don't think, no offense, I don't think so, that's going to satisfy a lot of Republicans. Is there something well, more? What about the individual mandate? I'm trying to... I'm, Would you be I open to that? I, I work on behalf of the people of Pennsylvania. <laughs> yes. They're yeah. Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. But I think most of them understand that something as big and as consequential and as important to the economy as health care, no bill is going to be perfect. You've got to make changes to it. But we should do it in the normal course of uh, how, how some of us arrived at... Uh, the conclusion we should change parts of it already. But the idea that we're going to inject this and relitigate this every time you have a, a, a fiscal or budgetary uh, deadline, I think creates a kind of, you know, I, I hear a lot of people talking about uncertainty. This is uncertainty on steroids to have a, another big fight about health care when, when you should be paying for the operations of the government and making sure we don't have any But it's uncertainty fault. that President Obama has himself kind of inflicted by delaying parts of this, by pushing things off because it was oh. politically expedient for him to get reelected first before a lot of this went into action. Hasn't he played a role in a failure of leadership, A, to sell this to the people, because clearly three years later he's still talking about it, and to get people to understand it? It's, be, it's this, being this implemented. Is difficult. In... Look, this is difficult. <laughs> Ask some of the people in the Republican Party how difficult the first couple of years were of Medicare Part D. Sure. Okay? Which is now very popular, by the way. I'm not necessarily creating an analogy here, but there was a, there was a period of time where there was confusion about it, and maybe people didn't understand it. And I think we're going through that period. It may take a while, and this is difficult to get mm -hmm. right. But the idea that you can just walk away from this problem and just say that our fiscal condition is going to be fine, our economy is going to grow without tackling this health care problem, I think is, is really missing the point. You know, one thing okay. that I've heard some of my Democratic colleagues compare this to also um, is the Medicare. And they, I've mm -hmm. heard one of my colleagues jump up today and give a quote from Ronald Reagan of, 30 years ago um, about Medicare and talking about how it was such a terrible thing. Well, the fact is, if what happens with Obamacare is the same thing that happened with Medicare, can you imagine what our children and grandchildren are going to be faced with 30 years from now from the standpoint of ballooning costs? I mean, Medicare is just so totally out of control. Mm -hmm. And uh, yet, we're, there are lots of things in Obamacare that that Republicans do sport. Uh, that's why I say repeal and replace is what we need to do. Our health care system is in a mess. Sure. Needs to be fixed. And every doc will tell you that. Every hospital will tell you that. And they give you good ideas about how you can fix it. What's in Obamacare, though, is not the ideas that came from the medical well, community mm -hmm. to that's, deliver health care. With, again, with all due respect, Senator, that's actually not true. And uh, much of uh, Obamacare is really based on Republican plans, including a plan in Massachusetts that was uh, put in place by a Republican governor. It's based on competition. It's based on uh, the private sector competing against itself for the first time ever.
Um, but let me go to one other thing. I'm going to burn it with one. And it's mandated insurance at the barrel of a gun. <laughs> Absolutely. Significant competition for the first time ever. Uh, and transparency. And as Some a result of, of that states. transparency, <laughs> rates have gone down. For, the, you know, for more than yeah. two decades, health care spending has been on a high-end trajectory. For the first time ever, it's on its way down. But we'll see how long that lasts. I want to... I want to show you one more headline, and I'm sorry, I keep showing you headlines. <laughs> <laughs> this is from the Courier Journal in Kentucky, and it's about your leader, Mitch McConnell. And the big headline is shutdown is looming. So it is tagging Mitch McConnell with shutting down the government. Do you think that he is sending Ted Cruz a thank you note this morning for that? He's being primaried on the right by the Tea Party. He's got a tough race on the left. Um, and now he's tagged with probably one of the most unpopular things across this country, shutting down the government. Well, I think Mitch did a very good job of showing good leadership uh, in the last several days when he came out and said in the press very directly that uh, I do not support a shutdown. I'm going to vote for cloture on the motion to proceed. I'm going to vote for cloture on the um, uh, limiting debate. Um, he didn't have to do that. If he had, was totally worried about a primary race, he might have gone a different direction. But it's leadership. That's what this is all about. And um, I, I think that's what he showed there. And I think that's what you're going to see during the next uh, 72 to a week from now, 72 hours to the next week. Who knows how long? Well, let me just forecast even further ahead to the next debate on the debt ceiling. Do you think it was a smart strategy, Senator Casey, for Obama, President Obama, to come out early and say he's not going to negotiate on this? And before anyone can walk in the room, he's essentially closed the door. Look, the, the problem here with, with uh, playing games with defaulting is, are, I think, are pretty obvious. You can't talk to any economist. Uh, anyone who knows anything about either the markets or the economy who thinks that defaulting our obligations for the first time in American history is a good idea. So we should take that off the table. That doesn't mean you don't have a, a debate about health care. What we should be talking about is what happened to the middle class the last generation. So you they, support the strategy hammered. to not negotiate on the debt ceiling with Republicans? I don't think we should do anything that imperils the ability of the United States government to, to pay its debts. It is, I don't even want to contemplate what would happen to the economy if we took that kind of a hit. Okay, well, thank well, you we to Senators. We always negotiate on debt ceiling. Oh, I know. We it, this, always do. This, I, I, it would and not be the first time. he'll negotiate with Putin, but he won't <laughs> negotiate with Boehner. Thank you to Senators Casey and Chambliss. Now